you've already seen the performance tests and you know you want your next computer to be one of the new M1 MacBook Pros, but do you want the 14 inch? or the 16 inch? Do you want the M1 Pro processor or the M1 Max processor? Today we're gonna figure it out and I shoot both photo and video with my wife professionally, often on the same jobs at the same time, so we need a computer that's gonna handle all of it. We're gonna tell you exactly which one you need to buy, starting by doing a bunch of photography tests and then we'll tell you about what photography build you need and then we're gonna do some video tests and tell you what video editors are gonna need. And I'm a big fan of real world tests, so this is how the computers actually work. I'm gonna be using Lightroom, Capture One, Lightroom Room Classic, Photoshop, Final Cut Pro Resolve, and Premiere. And the next time you're configuring a new Mac, be sure to check out Setapp, sponsor of this video, link in the description. They have so many great Mac utilities. Let's start with Lightroom. So this 14 inch model is the cheapest one you can get. It's only got the eight core M1 Pro processor, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Meanwhile, the 16 inch has the 64 gigs of storage and the M1 Max and two terabytes of storage. So this is almost totally maxed out and this is the very base model. And to be really clear, I know people get confused about this. The 14 and 16 are performing almost exactly the same. I just got the 14 because I wanted to compare the cheapest, but the screen size doesn't generally affect performance. Let's try using the new smart mask feature, select subject. Okay, and I got like, you know, one second faster on the M1 Max, but that's not an important difference. You can do all the basic editing stuff. I'm not even gonna go through it because they can both handle that. So let's, uh, let's, let's try to move into Photoshop, see what happens. All right, launching Photoshop, no important difference. We're about the same. Now I'm actually gonna let a lot of things run at once so we can see what happens to the RAM. Let's launch Lightroom Classic. I guess we can time that too. All right, same as Photoshop, launching Lightroom Classic, effectively the same speed. So I can tell you right now, we're only gonna see significant differences when we start pushing these to the extreme. So let's stitch some panoramas. I've got 11 photos I shot here in the studio just before we started. They're all 45 megapixel raw images from the Canon R5. Should see a difference here, let's find out. All right, now that was a real difference. We just stitched a 100 megapixel file and the 16 gigabyte M1 Pro is about twice as long as the M1 Max, 64 gigs. All right, now let's try a test that'll stress a few different things. I'm gonna open all of these up into layers in one file. So this should kind of fill up the RAM and take a while for the CPU to jam all these open and get them into Photoshop. All right, well, that's an interesting surprise. The M1 Pro 16 gigs couldn't actually launch all the files. It just gave me an error. It couldn't launch Photoshop and it took about 40 seconds to do it on the M1 Max. And this is for a huge file. This is over four gigabytes and I can't actually even save it as a PSD. I have to save it as a large file format. So not many people are working like this. I've got to emphasize that. But hey, if you're the one stacking a dozen 50 megapixel files, then you know which computer you need, I guess. Okay, let's jump back over to regular Lightroom, try the enhance feature. So this is Adobe's feature where it doubles the size of the image using AI. It says it's gonna take 12 seconds on both of them. We'll see about that. Not a huge difference for super resolution. They're just a few seconds off. All right, I'm gonna quit all my Lightrooms now. And let's take a look at Capture One. Next will be an import and preview generating test. I got the same 100 files loaded onto two matching memory cards. They're both pretty fast. But you know what, if I'm watching the performance of these, there is good software for that. Like iStat Menu, let's check it out. All I need to do is launch Setup. Take a look at my favorites and hey, there it is. So now up here in the corner, I can keep an eye on my memory usage, my CPU, all that stuff. But hey, what's this? How am I hiding and showing all these menu items? Oh, that's Bartender. Another one of my favorites here in Setup. These Macs just keep getting better and better, but there are also changes happening in the world of software. Let me show you Setup. It can bring you some welcome simplicity and productivity to your daily tasks. So when you need to get something done, it'll usually already have a solution waiting for you. So there's no need to waste time searching around on the internet, trying to find an app to solve your problem. It's already there in Setup. Let's take a look. Let's say you finished a photo shoot, downloaded everything, and then realized the folder is empty. You deleted the photos, you can't find them. They need to be recovered. So we're gonna launch Setup and search for Recover Deleted Files. And right here we got Disk Drill. So with just one click, I've got a full version of the app. No messing around with a trial or demo versions or spreading my credit card across the internet. There's already a solution waiting for you in Setup. You can optimize every step of your daily workflow with apps focused on productivity, task management, 
and many more. SetApp is adding new premium apps on a regular basis so you can avoid downtime and discover powerful new tools. So think tasks, not apps with SetApp. For a seven day free trial, click the link in the description below and let's get back to our tests. 145 megapixel photo import. All right, those were so close, there's not an important difference. The pro was actually a few seconds ahead, but they're both just over a minute. Now, obviously a big part of photo editing is just the experience. So like if I just flick through these, yeah, they both load instantly. So even when I'm editing on the faster M1 Max, there are all these moments where it still hangs a little. And I kind of blame Adobe for this. It'll be like when I'm flicking through photos. So photographers, here's the deal. 99% of you can get all of your work done on either of these. You only need the bigger one if you're doing really specialty work. So let's put together a build that's gonna work for most of you. I'm in Canada, but let's do this on the US site just so everybody recognizes the same prices. First of all, don't get the 13 inch. You do wanna get the 14 or 16. And here we go. This on the left, this is the one we've been working on, the 14. I wouldn't actually recommend that. Personally, I think 16 inches is absolutely worth spending your money on, but you don't really need to upgrade it very much. So this is kind of the sweet spot to me. The CPU on the M1 Pro is exactly the same as on the M1 Max. You're just giving up some GPUs and some of the hardware acceleration for video editing and you're saving yourself 400 bucks. Now, memory and storage, the upgrade I think everybody should do is get at least one terabyte of internal storage. Even if you keep all your photos on an external drive, which I do and you probably do too, 500 still puts you in a place where your scratch disks can end up full or your downloads folder is overflowing. Having a little headroom is very helpful. If you can afford it, go for two terabytes. That's my configuration, but that's you know up to you. Now, when it comes to memory, you can totally get by on 16 gigs. If you need to save the money, you will probably be okay. I edited a lot of photos and some big 4K videos with eight gigabytes of memory on my iMac earlier this year. So yeah, you can survive on 16, but if you have a higher megapixel camera, if you do multiple things at the same time, yeah, 30, 32 is worth it if you can afford it. Again, this is just up to your budget, but this is kind of the configuration that's worth it to me. 10 core M1 Pro, 32 gigs of RAM, and at least one terabyte of internal storage, which comes to 3,000. $100 as my recommended photographer build. Now let's move on to video. We created a bunch of stress tests for comparisons between Final Cut, Premiere and Resolve. Starting with our real world normal 4K timeline, they can both play it back totally smoothly, which is good news. Uh, I couldn't actually do this on better quality, which is what we're on here, on my previous 2018 MacBook Pro. Um, and I did do some direct comparisons to that. Like if you're upgrading from an older one, I have a video for you about that as well. But the great news is now you can just work in better quality all the time. This plays back totally smoothly. Let's try and export. Okay, so that was almost twice as long for the M1 Pro. And I could act surprised, but that's kind of what I expected. It's a super fast CPU, but has none of the hardware acceleration that is specifically targeted for H.264, for ProRes, for HEVC, all the codecs that we're using in this timeline. With the photography tests, we're mostly on level ground, but we are not anymore. The M1 Max is definitely pulling ahead. But as every editor knows, you spend a lot less your time exporting than you do working in the timeline. So we've got a stress test here where we built a stack of six 8K ProRes files that are all playing back at the same time. I just wanna know if it can play them. And remember, these uh, are both recording the screen with QuickTime as they play. All right, that didn't take long to see. The M1 Pro is struggling. It is dropping frames like crazy and stuttering. It's not playing back these six streams of 8K. Meanwhile, the M1 Max, it's smooth, it can totally handle this. I think this test is a good moment to talk about future proofing, which is a lot of what we're considering when we buy our computers. So often it's this vague concept of like what's gonna happen in the future that might matter. You're probably not gonna be stacking six layers of 8K, but you might have a multicam shoot and some of those cameras might be in 8K and others may not. 8K is coming gradually, for many of us, 4K will probably still be our final export. And this is actually, this is the best case scenario because these are all 8K ProRes files. Uh, we also did tests with RAW. If you want to see that in the other video, it's a lot more crazy. Anyway, I know this can't handle it. All right, let's get out of Final Cut. Let's try Premiere. Let's start with something simple, 4K playback. Can it go smoothly? So both of these have some basic grades on them. They have my Stallman LUTs. Link for that is in the description if you want to download them. And 
looks like they can both handle playback at full resolution. Hey, that's great news. I think you're doing any of the straightforward, typical editing for 2022. That's gonna be like a 4K timeline, just a couple of layers of footage, maybe a couple titles, some music, but you're not going crazy. You will be fine on the M1 Pro. You can do it, but you will see the difference in the M1 Max. All right, I wanna see an export test here too. All right, not as big of a difference as Final Cut, but still substantially better in the M1 Max. But if you wanna learn how to use all the software the way that I do, it'd be great if you would subscribe, then we can do more of this. But yeah, Premiere closed the gap a bit. We're seeing a bigger difference in Final Cut than we do here in Premiere Pro. So let's build a video editor's MacBook Pro. I think it's more important to get the 16 inch for video than for photo because there is more interface you need to see. And I strongly believe that in this case, the M1 Max is worth it. So if you're on a budget, you can just add the M1 Max and you could still use 32 gigs of RAM. That's totally safe. And you could use one terabyte of storage. So this is kind of the base model, it's $3,500, but is it worth it for 64 gigs of RAM or two terabytes of storage or eight terabytes of storage? That's a much longer conversation. And we had time for that over on the podcast. But the next video you should watch is about the first things I do when I set up a brand new MacBook Pro. I've got some very cool secret tips in there that you probably haven't heard before. I'll see you over there, guys.